Well, I'm trying something different. I'm going to try to write on this picture at the same time that I explain how someone can become chronically constipated from poor vitamin A metabolism. So this is going to be fun. Okay, so I'm kind of going to tell a story. And this is something that actually happened to one of my clients. But of course, I'm not going to use their actual name. Um, uh, but mom would be happy that I shared because she's fascinated that this explains the story of her son. So um, I'll, I'm going to call him Sam. So when Sam was born, Sam had a genetic syndrome and Sam immediately had to have a feeding tube because Sam's esophagus was not attached to his stomach properly. It was his, he basically had no um, hole from the, you know, like his esophagus was there, but it was uh, strictured so much that nothing could pass through and they couldn't fix it with surgery. So Sam has had a G tube since his birth basically within the first week. So mom, of course, put him on a regular baby formula back then. And baby formulas do contain vitamin A and it varies in degree of how much vitamin A is in the formula. But of course, when Sam got over the age of one, he was transitioned to a standard formula and his mom is very healthy and his mom chose the best thing she could think of. And it was one of the organic formulas on the market. And I'm not going to name any names um, at this time, but you can message me if you um, your child is on a formula and I can um, help you out and let you know um, if it's one of the problem ones or not. <laughs> um, okay, so here's what happened. So Sam went on, a organic formula that has lots of dehydrated uh, fruits and vegetables in it and also um, has a pretty large amount of vitamin A. And so I'm not going to name the formula, but I brought up one of the formulas in question on the screen. Um, back when Sam was little, there was not a child version of this formula. And so he actually was on the adult formula and each carton on the adult formula had, um, well, I can bring that up in a second. It had a large amount of vitamin A, but we're going to look at the child, child formula. And so, you know, probably, um, I would say if you consume at least four cartons of this formula a day, you get about 1200 calories. And then if we add up 138 and 75, um, let's see, that's uh, 200. Y'all are probably better at math than me. Was that 213? Um, yeah, it looks like that 200 and maybe 13. <laughs> no, my brain's really tired. Um, um, but then if you have four of those, you get to about 800 micrograms to, per day. So let's look for if he, if his mom had used the formula that is available right now, what would his vitamin A, B, A intake be compared to the upper level intake for a one to three year old? Well, the upper level intake is 600 micrograms. So his mom probably took comfort in the fact that the formula boasts that some of the vitamin A is from beta carotene. And so it's not toxic. You won't convert as much beta carotene to retinol. But we know that now from studies in, in rodents, that if you provide them with a fat source that's high in polyunsaturated fats, such as high linoleic sunflower oil, that the enzyme that converts beta carotene to retinaldehyde, one of the forms of vitamin A that is considered to cause problems in excess, it upregulates that enzyme. And so you actually, in your intestinal tract, convert a pretty large amount of beta carotene into retinaldehyde. So we can consider that this two feeding after four cartons is definitely, um, even after three cartons is above the upper level intake for a one to three year old. Um, but of course um, he wasn't on that. He was actually on the, um, he was on this, the adult formula. So let's go over to that one and I had to go back because I had it open just a second ago. Not that one. Oh, 
I must have like gone past it. Hold on. We're going to go back into it. Um, we'll just do this one. This one is an adult formula for people with blood sugar issues, but we'll check that one out. Go to the product details, and then we'll look at how much um, carotenoids and vitamin A and palmitate are in this formula. So this is one carton, one carton. One carton contains 850 micrograms of vitamin A. And again, if it's a one to three year old, we'll go back over here, 600 micrograms is the upper level intake for preformed vitamin A. But now we know, again, based on studies that, um, well, look, this is interesting. So one carton is 550 micrograms of palmitate, which is preformed vitamin A. Um, but we also know from studies now that <clears throat> we can absorb a pretty good amount of beta carotene as long as there's a polyunsaturated fat available. In actuality, it, it's not just with the beta carotene rich foods. It's also if you have um, polyunsaturated fats, um, it seems to upregulate that enzyme longer, even outside of a meal that contains beta carotene. So um, if you look over in the blends that are added to this particular formula, the ones that we're concerned about related to vitamin A metabolism would be anything that contains an oxalate because we know, and if you watch my last video, you know that oxalates can impair lactate dehydrogenase, which slows down the recycling of NAD. So if you're in a low NAD state, you can't convert retin um, retinal and retinol into retinoic acid. So the things we definitely know are high in oxalate would be green tea, uh, turmeric, kale sometimes, but it depends on what kind. Broccoli sprouts are not high in oxalate. They're low, but maybe if you concentrate them, I'm not sure about acai. Uh, cinnamon is a high oxalate spice. Garlic, I don't think so. It's the amount that you consume. Um, uh, tomatoes are mm, kind of a medium. Blueberries can be high, depending on what kind of blueberry. Carrot is high. Beets are high. Raspberries um, are very high. Spinach um, is high. Tart cherry, not so much. And then organic blackberry, it's a little bit less than raspberries. But this product has a whole lot of oxalate. Okay. So now, let's go back to our little story. So Sam... He um, is started on this organic, healthy tube feeding formula, and his retinal levels increase. Okay, so they are going up. And Sam, Sam's mom is noticing. Oh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> I'm just going to drop with the pen. So these are going up, and Sam's mom, all of a sudden... <clears throat> starts to notice that um, Sam's kind of constipation that he's had because of his genetic syndrome that changed his gut and also his nervous system is getting worse, okay? So between the ages of one and three, his constipation got worse and the question is why? Well, retinol can actually bind to phosphatidylethanolamine throughout your body um, it creates a shift base in the eye and this causes macular degeneration. They see this happen in blood vessels too. And I think that it happens everywhere. I think it happens. I think that it's probably one of the causes of lipofuscans in the liver. I think that it's also, um, related to <clears throat> autism and Alzheimer's disease because people who have autism and Alzheimer's disease have very low levels of ethanolamine in the blood. And we're wondering where it went. Well, I think it went in complex with retinol. So as this goes up, the ability to make phosphatidylcholine in the absence of phosphatidylcholine in the diet, it goes down. And then choline in the body goes down. And because of that, we can't make enough acetylcholine and acetylcholine is the major neurotransmitter of the intestinal tract. So Sam gets a slower gut, slows down. Okay, so then Sam goes to the doctor. Let's go um, 
Let's draw a line over here. So you can see we need to make retinoic acid. Okay. So Sam goes to the doctor and mom says, this is horrible. Sam cannot poop. Please help him poop. And of course the doctor is like, hey, no problem. I, I got this covered. What I'm gonna do is give him some mural wax. Mom's like, okay, fine, that's great. And she is a cautious mom. She's like, but what about, what about the label? The label says that it shouldn't be used for under the age of 16. And the doctor says, oh, no, no, it's fine. We use it off label all the time. Everyone's using this. Everyone's fine. You don't absorb it. Well, the doctor isn't lying. He's probably just misinformed because we actually absorb 3.7% of every dose of, of polyethylene glycol, Miralax, Mobicol, um, those all are PEG 3500 or less. And the only time you don't absorb polyethylene glycol is if it has a molecular weight greater than 4,000. And we don't have those products typically on the shelf anymore. So we're absorbing Miralax. And what does it do? It becomes formaldehyde. And aldehydes tie up aldehyde dehydrogenase, which is involved in retinol or retinaldehyde metabolism. So the levels of retinol go higher. Um, and then on top of that, you can also metabolize Miralax to our favorite toxin, oxalate. And then that will actually impair lactate dehydrogenase, which will decrease your NAD levels. So we have NAD here. We're going to try to convert retinol into retinoic acid, but NAD levels are dropping and so this pathway is blocked and what happens even more retinol aldehyde builds up and so it can still continue to bind with phosphatidylethanolamine and poor Sam is going down neurologically and also having worsening constipation and is now reliant on Miralax. Now he has gas. Why does he have gas? Because Miralax causes gut dysbiosis, so gut issues. And when his bad bacteria are building up in his gut, bad bacteria steal his NAD as well. They're NAD suckers. So he has absolutely no NAD to convert retinaldehyde to retinoic acid. This leads to a further deficiency in choline, which leads to lower acetylcholines. So you can think slow brain, slow gut, so slow heart. He's slowing down and mom sees it. And it continues to get worse until the age of 17 where it blows up. And Sam starts to have seizures. And mom doesn't know why. And I propose that the reason why Sam has seizures is because he has a large amount of lipofuscin in his brain. And because he can't make retinoic acid efficiently. And what retinoic acid does in the brain is it actually takes these calcium channels channels and it closes them down when calcium channels are closed down by retinoic acid the brain is calm and slows down and so poor sam can't make retinoic acid in a sufficient amount anymore because he is very nad depleted so his brain is firing way too fast so now sam is in a pretty bad place and He's also about to graduate to the adult medical system. And when he graduates to the adult medical system, he's having a lot of infections. And mom is really concerned because the infections are new and he's never had this many infections before. And Sam has labs that are interesting. So Sam has really, really high monocyte levels. Okay. And you have to have, um, we have to have normal vitamin A metabolism to take a monocyte and to convert it into macrophages. Okay, so Sam is no longer making macrophages and macrophages are the big bacteria cleaner uppers. They kill bacteria. Um, they also, you know, clean up debris. They recycle iron. There's so many benefits to macrophages. So Sam isn't doing this and he's getting infections. And when he gets the infection, he gets taken off of his high vitamin A formula that he's been on for quite some time. 
Um, and he gets put on injure because he's an adult. And he also gets put on less insure. He was getting eight cartons of the other formula a day. And now he's only on five cartons of insure. Now Sam drops body weight super duper fast. And he's sick and he has headaches. And mom is not sure what's going on with Sam. And then I get to meet mom and Sam. And we figure it out that Sam is finally starting to detoxify vitamin A. But overall, he's really, really high. And detoxification is really hard on this entire pathway. And Sam has been quite sick, but good news is he's starting to recover. And the first thing that we did to help Sam recover is to restore his choline levels. And so Sam is getting eggs. He's getting some egg yolks mixed into his tube feeding and that um, the other thing is um, reducing his his tube feeding um, or modifying it a bit to um, make sure that he meets the RDA for vitamin A not going too low because it seems like when we go way too low on on vitamin A it causes um, a really really fast detox and that's what the headaches are from and the nausea and all the sickness that he's been having so um, I hope that explains kind of what's going on. Um, the good news also is his digestion is improving because he's getting more choline. He's making more acetylcholine and, um, and he's, he's on the upswing. He's actually waking up now in the morning and starting, uh, to, you know, play with toys and he hadn't played with toys in, in like an entire year. So, um, Anyway, and that's, that's a cool story. And if you're struggling with your gut motility and um, you're wondering why your gut has been declining, maybe you could think, is it my vitamin A status? Is my retinol aldehyde too high? Am I complexing retinaldehyde with phosphatidylethanolamine? Is that leading me to having low phosphatidylcholine levels? And maybe I'm not eating enough choline in my diet. So my whole choline intake is too low and I'm not making acetylcholine. Some other things that are important for the production of acetylcholine would, of course, be thiamine because you need a thiamine to make, you know, acetyl-CoA. And then, um, so, and then, of course, choline comes from here. And so sometimes people who have acetylcholine deficiencies are actually thiamine deficient. So these are all things to consider about your gut motility and the relationship to vitamin A. Let me know if you have any comments. Um, let me know if you like my hypothesis. Um, it makes sense to me and it's helped make sense um, of things that have been happening in my clients' lives too. So and that is all for today. I'm going to go eat dinner now. We are having steak and potatoes from our garden um, and <laughs> um, bacon, even though, you know, bacon's supposedly not good for us, but it's a treat night. <laughs> All right, talk to you later, bye.